Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Hamid from We Buy Any Card and today I want to cover the subject of grading. This is something that a lot of people get wrong and a lot of people simply aren't sure about and it can be uh, rather frustrating if you order a card and it is below your expectations and also if you uh, are a seller and you sell a card uh, and maybe you're not able to realize the full value of the card because you uh, perhaps undergraded the card. Now, uh, when we talk about grading, the first and most important thing to realize is that there are no objective criteria by which we can grade all trading cards. Uh, every vendor that you use in every uh, marketplace that you could choose, um, they all have their individual uh, and differing grading criteria. Uh, in the United States, generally, uh, the TCG player uh, criteria are the ones that are applied most broadly. But if you were to order cards from a vendor such as Star City Games, uh, Channel Fireball, or Card Kingdom, then um, it is definitely in your interest as a buyer to find the section uh, of these vendors' websites that cover grading to learn how they choose to grade their cards. Now, for the purposes of this video, uh, because we are based in Europe, we are going to be using the card market grading criteria. Now, these are not perfect, although they are very fit for purpose. Um, they do have a few problems, including some terminology such as at first sight and uh, tournament playability that uh, doesn't really make for very useful language. But generally, um, this is the system that we use. Uh, and being card market sellers, this is uh, something we do on a daily basis. Now, before we uh, get into any of the details, uh, there is uh, one other thing, and that is uh, lighting. The cards, uh, obviously, you're going to be looking at them in great detail, and you want to be mindful of the kind of lighting that you're using. I generally try to stay away from using natural light because it is uh, both unpredictable, and if it's sunny outside, then it can be a little overbearing. Um, today, and usually when I grade cards, uh, I've gone with a synthetic ring light at sort of medium brightness. Uh, I find this to be a generally good uh, level of brightness to use that you see here in front of you now. Um, and now let's get into some of the some of the terminology that we use now at the top. Uh, the nicest cards we have uh, are generally near mint cards, uh, or sometimes even higher mint cards. Um, and now you want to be careful also again with some of the terminology here because uh, when you are going into the higher grades, um, especially graded cards, cards that have been professionally graded by grading companies, the terminology of the grading companies is not always very helpful. For example, uh, Beckett Grading Services, BGS, uh, they would generally consider uh, a 7 to be a near mint card. But if you were to open up uh, the slab of a 7 and have a look at it, then it is not normally something we would consider a near mint card. It would probably be closer to good. So here we have six cards in front of us. Uh, we have one that is near mint to mint. We have one that is excellent. We have one that is good. And then confusingly, we have light played. Uh, in the United States, we generally would put light played as the second best. But in Europe, it is the fourth best. After that, we have played, and then the last card we have is poor. And we're going to start uh, with a detailed look at this City of Brass, which is actually inked. Uh, it's going to be quite difficult to show you the inking because it's mostly on the border. But generally, when we talk about poor cards, we're talking about damage in some way. We're talking about uh, a bend in the cardboard and the a com uh, some comp compromised structural integrity of the of the cardboard. And any level of inking, it doesn't matter if it's a tiny dot or all inked all around. Any level of inking has to be created as poor, uh, and that's the case with this card. It's quite subtle. I don't think I be able to get it on the camera because it just wouldn't focus right um, but generally uh, that's what we mean when we are talking about poor condition cards unfortunately if this card wasn't um, if it wasn't inked then it would actually probably pass uh, for somewhere between light play and play um, going on to the next card this is uh, a played card 
Now, a played card, according to the card market criteria, is as bad as you can get a card looking uh, through normal tournament use or normal play use. Now, again, this isn't the most helpful language, but generally we are talking about very strong wear all around, possibly some damage to the surface. We have these riffle shuff marks here. We have sort of multiple points of damage. Um, and all these little white dots of sort of um, damage here around that generally would would uh, prompt us to uh, to grade this card as played. Um, if you are going to be sending a card in for grading, there's also such a thing as grading of the signature. Now, this isn't something that normal vendors would do. Um, if you are buying a signed card, I was I would always advise uh, getting a photo of the card. Uh, just to check also uh, for the legitimacy, le legitimacy of the signature, but uh, sometimes older signatures can be quite faded or partial, uh, and so it's definitely worth uh, having a look at that if a signature is something you're interested in. But this is a, a typical example of a played card. Uh, next, we have light play. Uh, light play... Uh, uh, is not as bad as this if we consider the US grading criteria, but because we are looking at the card market grading criteria, we generally have a card that has playware all around, all around the border. Um, we wouldn't expect too much going on here in the middle of the card. Um, we might have a, a good amount of scratches. It's actually, this particular card has a fairly clean surface, um, but we would generally expect playware to be going all around here and actually this is a card I would say is on on the better side of light play for for the card market criteria but um, definitely a light played card um, the next great uh, criteria I want to look at is good now here we would have expect either many white dots on the border a sort of a dirty surface again this card does have a, a fairly maybe, decent surface, uh, but the damage wouldn't necessarily go all the way around. And you see here, the damage is sort of partial, like there's not that much going on here. It's a bit more here, uh, and it's sort of in intermittent. So this is a, a prime example of a good card. And um, as you can see, the surface is actually pretty good. Uh, now the next card is excellent. And here we have generally a pretty clean surface. Uh, you might have some minor scratches uh, and you'll have some whiting on the edges here. As you can see here, there's a little bit of whiting going on here. Um, some people might be tempted to grade something like this as a near mint card. Uh, this is probably, as you can see, there's some scratches here. And, but generally, Excellent cards, um, they, they have pretty good eye appeal. There's not going to be any significant damage on the border, just some, some little white dots. Um, maybe six, seven, eight at most, I would say, white little white dots. Uh, nothing too significant. Now, the final card is uh, a near mint card. Um, this is generally um, by the card market grading criteria. We would not expect more than maybe one or two perhaps three white dots on the border. Uh, we cannot have any scratches on the surface. If there is a scratch or a dent, then uh, anything if anything more than just an extremely minor thing, you know, you can see, for example, this card has a, just a tiny bit there, but generally that is not something we would exclude uh, from the near mint grade. And this has no scratches on the surface, maybe a, like a tiny whitening there. And yeah, so we're happy to grade something like this as a near mint card. Now there is one great uh, one category that is higher than near mint, and that is mint. Um, this is generally, uh, if you, if you are listing something on card market, it's generally not a good idea to list something as mint, um, unless it the card is already graded highly by a grading agency, such as BGS or PSA, is probably a nine five or above. Um, or that you're extremely confident in your grading, then uh, I wouldn't wouldn't advise grading something like that uh, or, or or choosing that that category without at least informing the buyer um, or uh, you know sending pictures or such. Um, next, I have a few other examples of cards that, uh, and this is more advice, I guess, uh, for 
um, for sellers and people who are generally trying to make sure that um, they act honestly and tr in in a transparent way when when they are selling trading cards. Uh, for example, we have here a tropical island, and we'll have a look at the condition. Generally, this is a pretty clean card. There's some dirt on the surface. Uh, we probably wouldn't grade this as near mint. Okay, we see a little bit more damage on the back. So, but generally, I would say this probably passes for good. However, we have something additional there, and if you look there across the surface there, uh, that's a roller line, so that's factory damage. Now, there is no uh, official guidance for how you would grade a roller line. Um, so in a case like this, we just have to make sure that the person buying the card knows what they're getting. Um, and generally, uh, the more expensive the card, the more responsibility the seller has to be transparent about the card that they're selling. And also the more responsibility the buyer has to solicit that information and, and ask. Um, and really the ultimate grade you can give a card is a, not necessarily something like near mint excellent but or good, but it is actually a description of the damage of the card. So here we would say, uh, the front of the card has clean borders um, and perhaps a little bit of dirt across the surface. And then on the back, we have some white dotting uh, on the surface, um, some sort of medium uh, border wear, and two visible roller lines. So one fairly strong one at the bottom and one slightly less pronounced one, uh, sorry, at the top and one slightly less pronounced one at the bottom. So a physical description is always uh, much more welcome and some uh, much more transparent of a way to sell more expensive cards, uh, like for example, this tropical island. Now, other things that uh, can come up um, are print defects. So for example, here we have a celestial prism from revised. Now you could send this card um, and you could grade it as probably a good grade, a uh, fairly clean surface, some border wear there, but it does have a, a print uh, imperfection there. And for example, if you found something like this on a more expensive card uh, and you sent it off to a buyer, um, they might not be very happy to receive a card like that. So it would definitely be in your interest to, to disclose that uh, and send a photo of that. Um, some other couple of other examples of this are cards that are very off center. And we have here an unsummon from beta. And this is an extremely off center card. Now, uh, the card is, it's generally in pretty good condition. I would probably grade this as an X card, but I wouldn't send this to a potential buyer without telling them uh, just how off center the card is. Now, if we are uh, strictly abiding by the card market grading criteria, then it wouldn't necess be necessary to do this because the centering isn't factored into the grade, but um, it would definitely, uh, if we wanna be acting honestly as sellers, we should tell our buyers that um, the card that they'd be receiving is significantly off center. And I, I don't necessarily think this has to be the case with every card. Um, older cards generally often have uh, bad centering, uh, but in sort of more extreme examples like this, and I just found this, this cheap card here where the card um, is actually, there's no top border to speak of. So uh, that's definitely something we'd, we'd wanna be telling uh, our buyer. The same goes for other types of printing damage, like this is a missing ink here on this sol ring. And then I have also something like this. Uh, this is just a secret layer uh, land and secret layer foils and newer foils more generally do not have um, a very good planarity as we call it. They often uh, curl a little bit. Um, this card, I would say, you know, it sort of probably passes the test where we wouldn't necessarily have to message uh, the buyer about it. Although, you know, if we want to do our due diligence and, and be completely honest about it, we, we probably ought to. Um, but things, um, cards can often get quite a lot more curled than this. And if it were any more than something like this, which probably could be fixed quite easily by placing the card in a top loader, 
and might even be fixed by the time it arrives with the buyer, um, then we should definitely be di di disclosing that. Uh, here I have another example of uh, just a card that's missing some of its ink. Uh, now I do have a few other examples here. Um, this is going to be maybe quite tricky to show you, but this card actually has a little bit of water damage. You should see a little bit of fraying of of the cardboard there and it doesn't matter how little the water damage is unfortunately you also see some staining there across the surface uh, something like that if there's staining on the surface if uh, you know maybe some food remains or uh, maybe somebody spilled a drink on this card that is always a poor grade despite this card actually looking fairly good uh, if we just look at it head on just because um, there is that little bit of a stain there um, and we have a couple of other examples here. Here we have some water damage, similar sort of thing down there, just a bit of a fraying of the cardboard. And finally, we have this Thalia, and you can see that little dot there. That's just the tiniest ink dot. And unfortunately, while this might otherwise be uh, a near mint card, because of that ink dot, unfortunately, the grade, at least according to the card market grading criteria, has to be poor. And you wouldn't really want to send a card um, that had an ink dot to a buyer without uh, disclosing something like that. Now, the final category of cards I want to talk about are foils. You do grade foils a little bit differently because the surface uh, can be so sensitive. Now, this is an older foil that we created as near mint. And I'm just trying to get the glare here on the surface. You can see the surface is pretty clean on this card. Um, and the back is pretty much the same. So this is a, was an easy grade uh, near mint for us. Now, when you get to some of these older foils, the uh, surface tends to be very sensitive to any kind of minor scratching. So on this card, um, I'm not sure if that's a, some sort of stain there, but apart from that, you can see something like here, there's a minor scratch. And I do have another example here. And here we see it a bit better. There's a sort of a uh, little bit of uh, what we call clouding across the surface. These are minor scratches in the foiling, uh, sort of diminish the foiling. And we'd never create something like that as near mint. We'd give it excellent at best if it was minor clouding. And, and if there was anything more major, we'd, we'd go for uh, for good or possibly even light play. Now, um, I think that's probably it for grading. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below. Um, and thank you very much for listening. And we'll be back again soon with uh, another video.